I mean, I switched to English because as far as I understood, uh, it's probably the best way uh, for everybody to, um, to understand them, to understand to me. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Andrea Cartoccio. I'm the Marketing, Communication and Innovation Director of uh, Elior Group for, uh, for Italy. And uh, it's a pleasure for me to spend the next, let's say, 50 minutes, one hour with, uh, with you just to introduce uh, the company, what we do uh, in general, how we face, let's say, the COVID-19 uh, moment and what we see also in, uh, in the future of our, uh, of our business. I have a few slides uh, with me and now I try hopefully and easily to share with you. And I hope it works. It seems uh, that should uh, should uh, should work as far as I as as I understood. In case it isn't uh, okay, no. Someone from the the director Matteo is telling me that everything is uh, is uh, perfectly uh, seeable to uh, to uh, to everybody. Okay. So um, first of all, uh, let me just spend uh, just to uh, frame uh, what we do and who we are. Uh, let's tell you a bit of what we do. It's basically, we are uh, a contract catering uh, company. So basically, we operate in the general world of the contract uh, catering, which, uh, I mean, uh, concretely, it means different pieces of the business with a lot of specificities and very different and involving different type of, uh, of, uh, of target of, uh, of people. So when, when, when it comes to the contract catering, we are thinking about uh, schools and basically the canteen in the schools, hospitals, and let's say all the world of the health and welfare, we call it. So moving from uh, the hospital, the one that you usually uh, refer uh, to, meaning both uh, patient and employees of the hospital, which, I mean, the employees of the, of the hospital belongs more to uh, a kind of uh, companies, which is the segment of the business and, uh, and, and industries, and all the army forces, so all uh, uh, the type of, let's say, Ministry of Defense uh, and all uh, the related type of, uh, of, uh, of business. What we do, basically we do all the different pieces of uh, of the contract gathering, uh, mainly <clears throat> we manage the entire supply chain. So basically we supply, we take care of the supply chain of all the raw materials, <clears throat> majority of the case food. Then we transform them into meals. And uh, then we serve these meals in a variety of, uh, of, uh, of way. And then, uh, and then we, see, we see later on. We also leverage one big, big, big and ever that are the central kitchen. Central kitchen, you can, I mean, imagine, uh, I don't know, it's not a sexy word, but you can imagine a big factory of food who are continuously producing meals. And then we deliver this meal, uh, can be refrigerated, cook and chill, all the different type of, uh, of, of production in, <clears throat> restaurants where we reheat it and then we serve. So that's the big, big uh, world where we, where we uh, operate. And we operate in a way, and then you see in, uh, in, uh, in the number, um, I know that it's strange to uh, talk with you uh, using uh, some concept around the, um, around the, industrial production rather than artisanal uh, production. But if you imagine how big we are, okay, every year we produce uh, something like uh, more than uh, 100 million of meal per year in all the different type of, uh, of, of, of segments. Well, I mean, we are the biggest one in, uh, in, in Italy, but we do it operating 2,400 restaurants in all uh, the geographies of this uh, of this uh, country. Of course, we need people. We need people to produce. Uh, we need people to to serve. We need chefs, not only. And in Italy, we are uh, 12 uh, 12,000. 
okay? They are all direct uh, people, so basically we do not have temporary management uh, people, but in few cases, uh, in, uh, in few specific and urgency and emergency need, otherwise they are all uh, ALR uh, um, employees. With a total turnover per year, which is roughly 600 million euros of turnover, um, we are uh, part of a bigger group, okay? Uh, we are a French uh, company uh, operating at global level, uh, mainly and majorly in six big uh, countries. And you see, we operate uh, 23,000 uh, restaurants uh, across, uh, across the globe. Uh, majority of the business and the restaurants are in uh, Europe, UK included, and uh, in uh, in in US. And uh, more than uh, uh, 100,000 uh, employees and close to 5 billion uh, uh, euros of uh, of turnover. Uh, we are at the Paris Stock uh, Exchange uh, uh, market, and uh, globally we are the number three. Uh, global player in the food and beverage contract catering uh, services. So basically, we are the third biggest uh, <coughs> biggest one. So, I mean, just to put in a nutshell, uh, uh, we are, uh, I think we are in, in between uh, a world that is based on uh, kind of artisanal uh, heritage and, and, and skills and know-how, which is around all the cooking, okay, area. But on the other uh, side of the situation, we apply potentially the same rule, same rules uh, of uh, of a factory. Why? Because if you need to manage uh, 100 million uh, meals per year, and if you need to manage 12,000 uh, employees, and if you have and if you have to run. Uh, 2,400 restaurants, you can not apply, let's say, artisanal uh, way of doing things. You need, of course, to do it uh, in a more industrial, uh, in a more industrial uh, way. <coughs> it, it, it is true that our DNA and our essence is around, uh, is around food. Uh, we try, let's say, to coordinate and operate everything, having uh, at the center of our uh, core competencies uh, and academy, which is of course in a food uh, a food academy, where basically what we do in a nutshell we make food research, different type of raw materials, basically uh, we analyze uh, new raw material with new way of uh, producing, cooking uh, technology, cooking uh, methodology. Uh, just in time uh, production, uh, long shelf life production, modified atmosphere production, everything that can, let's say, be suitable with uh, the different type of uh, needs that we have in all the different type of restaurants that we run first. And then, of course, uh, try to uh, pioneer all the innovative uh, technology that can allow us, uh, first of all, to uh, work around uh, sustainability as an area, which basically means uh, trying to save energy, trying uh, to preserve as much as we can uh, and work around the area of the food waste. Uh, we know and we are big producer of food waste, unfortunately, uh, is part of our, uh, of our uh, essence. Unfortunately, uh, we are trying to work uh, strongly around uh, this uh, area, also together with the university uh, <coughs> that you are in, with, uh, with Polenz, that, by the way, is one of our uh, partners in uh, the Food Academy um, in, uh, in, uh, in Milan. So basically try to find a new way, a new, a new, a new solution that we can apply to do, to do that. Then, of course, uh, I mean, there are three pillars that we want to always take into account. The first one is taste. That's the reality. We are doing food, and taste is an essential part of, uh, of, our, uh, of our daily daily job. Of course, you cannot avoid uh, to have uh, tasty food. That's the kind of basic and starting, uh, starting point. Then, as I said, sustainability. Sustainability is one long-term 
asset and long term driver that we want to play with. It's even more, let's say, relevant now in this, uh, let's say, emergency and difficult time. And I do personal uh, uh, believe that even if in this moment we are forgetting the plastic uh, issue, simply because for food, uh, let's say, for health and safety, let's say, reasons or, uh, or concerns, uh, we are, let's say, moving back uh, to plastic in the short term. In the long, mid-long term, it will be more, uh, more important. And then innovation. Innovation for us is, uh, I mean, is crucial and is, and is, uh, and is fundamental. We cannot think to run uh, our business that we were doing uh, 10, 15 years uh, ago. Uh, I always know that around uh, food, that there is this uh, kind of artisanal type of uh, concept, uh, which is sometimes limiting um, uh, the way that people working in this uh, industry um, use new technology, new equipment uh, to innovate what uh, what they do for us uh, is uh, crucial we cannot do uh, uh, things uh, in the future without uh, uh, playing uh, uh, this in this business uh, with the new equipment with the new technology it's simply not possible uh, it is something that in especially in the last uh, two three years uh, have been uh, have been pushed a lot a uh, new home and new type of uh, uh, food preservation uh, technology have been uh, uh, put and also I would say have been embraced by this, uh, by, this, uh, by this business. So in a company that has to try to replicate somehow a certain level of quality and guarantee a certain level of quality, we, can, we cannot simply uh, do things without uh, uh, this type of new, new, new push. Also because I mean, if you if you if if you give a look on uh, on this, uh, it gives you the level of the complexity that every day we face. Uh, this is how we split the business and basically also the customers and basically our guests. Uh, finally, uh, we are talking about uh, students, and when I say students, we are starting from uh, nursery, two years old, up to university. So basically, we are uh, accompanying uh, uh, young, uh, let's say, students uh, in their uh, discovery process of new taste, uh, new food, uh, and in building their kind of memory in the back of their, uh, of their brain. Then uh, we are uh, working with, the, let's say, the probably most uh, fragile uh, type of guest because uh, in the hospital and in all uh, the area of the retirement homes, there are for sure either because they are shortly in a more fragile uh, situation where they are facing uh, malnutrition or whether where maybe they need some more, uh, more protein after a surgery. Let's imagine uh, uh, this type of, uh, of things, for example, or people that are in the last part of their life, unfortunately, where for sure we know that muscles and in general, and the bones need, let's say, a certain type of boost coming from, uh, from the food. And so we need to design specific uh, uh, menus and specific recipes that will allow this type of people, let's say, to manage either the last part of their, uh, or their life first, with all the problems that are related uh, with, uh, with seniors in general, or because there are people that in the short term <clears throat> They need a specific, uh, a specific diet. Then there is a big word of the, we call it business and industry. A business and industry, talking about uh, workers. Workers, uh, you need probably to imagine uh, uh, blue collar. So people that they need uh, while they work every day, a certain level or, of energies and calories, because they need to uh, uh, produce and run uh, maybe a production uh, line. So they really need to have uh, a certain level of nutrients uh, that uh, will keep them uh, strong and energy enough to run their daily job. And then there is the opposite. There are people that they do not, uh, basically they are all the white collar, that they do not uh, run, uh, let's say, a physical job. It's kind of more mental job. So they have an opposite type of, uh, of need. So they need uh, more balanced type of meal, uh, slightly lighter for sure. 
definitely stronger part of fruit and vegetables, definitely a Mediterranean uh, uh, type of, uh, of menu because they have the opposite problem. And, and then we run a specific business, which is uh, the contract uh, catering on board. So basically all the train, uh, we are the partner of uh, Ferrovia dello Stato, which is the national uh, uh, train company in, uh, in Italy. And we run all, all, uh, all the on board uh, catering for the high speed uh, train. And again, you need to imagine what does it mean to cook in a train that is uh, that has on average a speed around uh, 300 uh, kilometers per hour so definitely you cannot apply my grandmother type of uh, approach so boiling the water and cooking uh, cooking the pasta so there is all a kind of pre preparation uh, phase which is done uh, centrally and then uh, on board uh, is only done let's call it the last uh, the last mile when you reheat uh, uh, with the final uh, finishing and uh, putting together sauces and pasta and everything, or eating uh, um, a different type of uh, meal which doesn't need, doesn't need to be, let's say, uh, reboiled or recooked for the last uh, for the last mile. So that's uh, I mean, try to give you briefly and shortly. Then, uh, in case you have question. Uh, I'm, um, I'm here available, or in case that we can have a question at the end of the of the of the session. So, different type of businesses, quite I would say uh, complex, uh, operating either only uh, Monday to Friday, only lunchtime, uh, throughout uh, the week, like the hospital or uh, or the train, which is a 360. Uh, five uh, days per year, so basically we never um, we never stop. And um, they were uh, they were asking me uh, in this moment of time what type of issue we are um, we are facing. Well, I mean, I, I, I would start from let's say the most uh, uh, I would say the most easy one. Uh, which is, uh, but we, we, we need to deal uh, with a big drop in terms of volume. That's the reality. And if you go back to the beginning when I was saying that we are closest to effect, it means that we have an organization that is set up to, uh, I would say, to live and work with high volume. And when volumes are not in anymore, but we have designed an organization uh, in the kitchen, an organization uh, in the lobby, an organization in all the supply chain that needs, let's say, to live with this level of volume, then of course uh, uh, the situation is not anymore anymore in uh, in, uh, in 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 balance. Of course. We will have a problem, and we have right now shortly a problem with the people because we have designed a situation with uh, uh, 12,000 people, and not because we wanted uh, uh, by chance, it's because we need this type of people because food and contract catering, it is, it was, and it will still be in the future a labor intensive, which basically means that people are fundamental. They are the key part of what we do every day together with the food. That's the combination is people and food. OK, so now we will have a problem because if we will face a crisis with a low level of volume, especially probably because there will be different uh, habits uh, with smart working in uh, the uh, business and industry. If we will face uh, issues uh, with the schools uh, because education uh, won't start as it was before, we will have, we will have first of all, to redesign our, uh, our services. We will have to redesign our process and probably we will have too many people, okay? Because we had to resign. So that's, 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 that's a point for sure. And then for the next, for sure, 12 months, everyone will be operating in, the, say, the food business, whatever it is, concession, small restaurant, big restaurant. We will have an increase of cost. That's the reality. Uh, because uh, 
uh, personal uh, PPE, so personal protective equipment, we will have to keep it more than what we did it before. Social distancing means uh, to have uh, uh, less, uh, basically less seats. So you have, a, you have a space and now it's half uh, occupied. So that will have a, a big issue, okay? And then I would like also to mention, I call it a social, uh, social problem. When I say social, it's because we probably need to rebuild a certain level of uh, uh, mutual trust between us and our consumers and our, uh, and our, and our guests. If you uh, now in the last three months, uh, also in food in general, but in food too, I mean, we have been pushed back uh, 20 years ago. 25 years ago, and we are talking about uh, health and safety, uh, which is strange because it's something that it was a uh, common, was a kind of given. No one was mentioning whether in a restaurant uh, there was a certain level of uh, safety. I mean, it was a given. And uh, people, I mean, we were talking about uh, what type of ingredient you were serving me, how nice you are, in uh, in dealing in the lobby with the in the lobby with the, with the customers and the consumers, uh, uh, what is the level of uh, uh, menu that you are serving? Uh, how much is sophisticated? How much is not? Uh, how much you want to answer uh, a key ingredient? So it's what, more, I mean, really, really around the quality you add in your plate in a nutshell well now we are really back in 25 uh, years ago uh, if you if you search uh, things uh, around 25 years ago uh, consumer expectation there were people uh, looking how how safe uh, uh, and how uh, <laughs> how the level of uh, of safety was was uh, was strong enough at that time in the restaurant so that's a big uh, uh, there are two big problems. The one is uh, more short term, and I think the social one it will take uh, a bit more time uh, to be to be re, re I would say re rebuilt. And so, if we start from that uh, uh, concretely, I mean we had to react. That's the reality. Uh, we had to react first of all because we have a major difference compared to a normal restaurant. We didn't stop. Okay, uh, during the lockdown but uh, the education, the rest of the business had to keep everything working. Hospitals, retirement homes, they were open. Uh, business and industry, few sectors shut down. Other sectors that they were linked, let's say, with uh, um, some specific uh, sector and needs of the country, they were open. So we had to perform what we used to do, okay? And so we had to reorganize immediately. Uh, we had to reorganize uh, the restaurants, basically social distancing, that's for sure. We had to extend the opening hours because, you, you, I mean, you imagine in, 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 in a company, maybe you have two hours and you need to process uh, sometimes uh, 2,000 people in two hours. You need to serve 2,000 people in two hours. That's why I was, think, I was thinking and telling you more uh, a kind of industrial type of, uh, of approach somehow. Why? Because otherwise you cannot uh, serve 2,000 people in, uh, in, in two hours. And basically, if you apply some social distancing rule, of course, you cannot do like that. So we have to extend all our, uh, uh, let's say, opening uh, opening hours that's the that's the reality which implies of course to redesign all the process the process in the lobby but also the process in the back uh, in the back office because one thing is to serve 2000 people in 2 hours other things is to serve 2000 people in 4 hours you need to have uh, a kitchen uh, that is able to cope with this type of new of new service because you need to have proper uh, quality with the right temperature, with the right assortment for four hours, not only for two. So we have to redesign everything from the supply chain, what type of food, from the production, when you start, how do you organize the kitchen? 
to be able to keep on producing and having the coverage of four, uh, of four, four hours. Uh, then we need to apply uh, some uh, digital solution because, I mean, again, if you need to <laughs> make sure that 2,000 people arrive in the proper uh, moment without queuing too much, I mean, you need to use some digital uh, solution. If you do not want to use cash, why? Because it can be risky and contagious. You need to move to cashless payment solution, which basically means to move to uh, <coughs> some application link with your standard uh, cashier way of, uh, of doing things. And then we need also to raise the bar in terms of uh, uh, sanification. And uh, we were, let's say, luckily also because internally there is a, a division that is working specifically on uh, this type of, uh, of service. <coughs> and we apply some new technology around uh, hydrogen peroxide uh, uh, with a nebulizer or uh, we use an electric <coughs> atomizer. That's basically they are professional high quality solution that allow us to uh, have uh, the right level of uh, health and safety condition in uh, a place that is really, really, really big. Because again, a restaurant uh, for 2,000 people, it means uh, that you have a canteen of <coughs> 100 and 100 square meters. So again, you need to apply industrial way of cleaning space and surface that are closest to the industrial sanification, like a kind of, uh, of, uh, of factory. And then uh, just to make uh, concrete examples, that's it is how we reorganize. I mean, nothing really new now. We put all, uh, let's say, this, all the service that, that they were in the lobby, bar and everything that it was in the lobby has been put in the back office, of course. The, our operators serve now normally all the guests. No one can touch anything. You receive a tray. In the tray there is everything. There is always monodose, so you cannot uh, use uh, oil on your, uh, on your own. You cannot personalize somehow everything. And anything you ask, and we and we prepare uh, for you. And then the separation on uh, on the table. I think you can probably see. I mean, that's a plexiglass. We need to apply it. Why we up? Why we decided to apply the plexiglass is because, and I mean, uh, uh, there is a there is a, a cartoon board uh, in the top on the on the left. The saying, uh, "Let's restart uh, together." Why? Because uh, that's a kind of mutual relationship with the guest. You need to ask people to behave properly on one end, but you need also to give some rules to the people. That's why we decided to put the plexiglass in the city so that we do not allow people to make their choice. Okay? So, <clears throat> this is uh, how it is. We, we, which, I mean, is it, changing a lot uh, our business because food... Uh, is definitely a social moment. And now we are saying that for this moment of time, food is becoming, let's say, more uh, a rational and feeding uh, moment. I need to eat, and this is how I eat. Uh, and I think it's linked uh, with, the, with what I was saying uh, before uh, about, uh, let's say, rebuilding uh, time of mutual uh, mutual trust and changing a bit also the uh, the pyramid of, uh, of, uh, of 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 consumer needs and expectation of the uh, of the people. Now people are back uh, into 20 years ago somehow. They need to be reassured. That's the way uh, we were trying to reassure that this place is safe because people need to be sure that it's eating in a place that is clean, sanitized, and safe. That's, for us, is the basic need that we had to answer 
in this moment and will probably need to answer in the next uh, in the next uh, months for sure until uh, uh, vaccine will arrive um, and, and then uh, there is the digital um, it was a big boost okay uh, around uh, around uh, digital um, contract catering in itself in the last uh, in the last years I don't think did did, did play that much around the digital uh, uh, solution. Um, I mean, as as a Zellior, uh, I think we were. The, I mean, we are the leader, and uh, we were, let's say, pioneering this type of uh, of um, of enabler because we started we working around the digital and digital app and digital ecosystem and solution almost four years uh, four years uh, ago. And in the last two years and three years and a half, quite I would say uh, deeply and extensively, and and now this is our enabler to widening the offer that we need and we want to provide. Uh, mm, we have an app which is Joy Food. It's downloading uh, uh, can be downloaded for from uh, Google Play, so it's Android and uh, and uh, the iOS uh, market. Uh, normally, and uh, it's really a B2C, B2C is a standard app. So you see what is the menu in your site. Uh, you see all the nutritional uh, information uh, of each uh, dish. And then, of course, uh, on top of uh, being able to reserve uh, your uh, slot uh, for the lunch, uh, reserve your uh, your uh, your table. Now you can, of course. Uh, uh, pre-booking uh, the takeaway service. So the click and collect, I arrive, I simply take what I have to eat and I go to uh, eat and consume, uh, not in the restaurant. Uh, we activated the delivery at the desk. So imagine people that they do not want for many different uh, reasons to leave their, uh, their desk, but they need to eat. So they pre-book everything in, in the app, they select what they want. And then we'll, we will deliver the food at your desk. And we are working around this uh, digital solution for uh, a, uh, an offer that will be addressing the smart worker, which we think we remain in, uh, in, uh, in the future uh, as a percentage of people, especially in the business and industry that will be, will be working. And, and then uh, we have developed also, I would say, self-service uh, uh, solution. Uh, I, I hope it is clear, um, clear in, uh, enough and understandable from, uh, from the picture. And basically, it's all based on, uh, on the same app. That's a smart uh, uh, cabinet that is uh, connected uh, in, uh, via, via Wi-Fi, so you pre-book and provide what you want. And then there is a tray, which is your tray. You identify yourself in front of the fridge. And then uh, as an Amazon uh, locker, it opens your slot uh, and then you take your, uh, your food. Uh, you need to uh, regenerate your food uh, with a microwave. So also in terms of technology, uh, uh, we use the cook and chill uh, technology and we are uh, moving also to modified atmosphere uh, technology so we can uh, we can we can work with uh, with with boards this is one of the of the solution and there are other ones that are based on rfid that same uh, approach uh, is uh, there is an rfid on the place uh, smart uh, cabinet you identify yourself you open uh, uh, the the cabinet you select and take what you want and then when you close the door uh, there is the counting based on the RFID of what you have taken, and then uh, there is the bill uh, what you have uh, what you paid for. Uh, <clears throat> what we think uh, and how we think the the future of our uh, of our industry on top of the short term, let's say uh, problems. Okay, um, BNI. So all uh, the business and industry we for sure see uh, an increase of percentage of people not coming uh, back to work as they were doing before. So we will have to quickly 
redesign and reviewing our business model that is based, as I said before, big space, huge number of people, and uh, working uh, on a kind of more cap captive type of situation. So the employees is not choosing somehow to uh, go into the restaurant. I mean, I would not say that is obliged, okay? But that's the only solution that people have to eat. Now, when it comes to smaller volume, insisting in the same uh, place, uh, it goes in contrast with what I said before. That that's, that, that, that's a business based on, uh, on volume. So we will have uh, to have a more agile situation, more flexible uh, situation. The smart fridge was uh, was uh, was fun because when you reduce uh, the number of people that they the number of guests that they are in in the restaurant, then of course you need to redesign uh, your uh, offer, your your layout, and everything because you have not uh, anymore this type of uh, of numbers to sustain your cost and to sustain your uh, service and to sustain your your uh, uh, your offer. And uh, as I said before, we will be working directly uh, with the uh, end consumers to design a weekly nutritional uh, offer for the people that will keep on working remotely uh, at home. It will be a balance, uh, a balance uh, diet also because we think nutrition for people that will stay for longer at home, so uh, we, 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 I mean, this type of people will need even more uh, solution nutritionally balanced uh, because we, they will have a more sedentary type of, uh, of, uh, of life. Education. Education has been interrupted. That's the reality. Uh, in September, uh, should reopen, okay? We see it uh, not drastically change. We will have to readjust uh, slightly, probably the opening, uh, the opening uh, hours. Uh, I'm talking about young students. Of, uh, of, uh, of course, we will have probably to reorganize something uh, as a packet lunch because we will have different uh, places, not only the standard canteen uh, where students uh, uh, normally eat, but we do not see uh, major, major changes. Uh, what we already are trying uh, to do is some summer camps just to understand how we can redesign uh, spaces uh, and now we can approach uh, social distancing when it comes to uh, young, uh, uh, young students. Because as I said before, then if you need to ask to people, uh, now I'm talking about adult to behave in a certain way is already difficult when you ask uh, children or uh, between 6 and 10 to behave in a social distancing uh, way it will be even more uh, more uh, more difficult we will uh, uh, test and learn in uh, in the summer on and probably we are more moving in a small subgroup to be uh, to be managed because it will be it will be easier rather than big uh, group even if in the big group uh, we can keep the social uh, the social uh, distancing and uh, <clears throat> last uh, we see health and welfare health and welfare it we, we, we think it will uh, restart as it was uh, as it was uh, 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 before. Um, in in they are thinking about uh, just for your information uh, uh, they are thinking about social distancing in uh, in the room in the rooms for patients, which basically means uh, uh, a lower level of uh, occupancy in each uh, room, which again it it impacts. Uh, uh, the way the process uh, that we applied in the production. So again, also in the big hospital, we will have to redesign uh, everything. That's uh, for sure, because uh, we will have to cope in the next 12 months, probably with 20, 25% of lower uh, volume. So from starting from the supply chain production and all uh, the uh, production shifts, we will have to redesign uh, slightly uh, them operationally. Of course, and then uh, in uh, all the retirement homes, uh, we will have to face, uh, and that's of course uh, 
is the most uh, uh, I would say I mean that that's that's a tragedy around uh, uh, the number of deaths that we uh, face in as a country in all the retirement homes. But if we park at this uh, point, uh, which is of course the most important uh, one, uh, for us it will mean again to redesign also this type of, of, of service and also cope with an higher level of uh, um, expectation. We will, uh, I mean, we see an in for sure an increase in terms of uh, um, expectation in terms of uh, uh, nutrition, level of services, level of uh, uh, sanification of the of the place uh, and uh, probably also we will have to redesign completely uh, uh, the lunch and the dinner uh, moment uh, the now for uh, uh, senior people is really is the essence of the so socialization in retirement homes and probably again there we will have to apply the same social distancing uh, rules uh, in a more difficult way uh, because we do not have big spaces there, uh, and uh, the uh, concept of the extension of the opening hours is more uh, difficult to be uh, to be applied because uh, they are shorter in terms of uh, time and, and and slot uh, usually in the retirement uh, homes. And then uh, I think it's uh, probably uh, important also for you to give you because I. I think I was asked by by by, by Roberta and Matteo, uh, what are the key uh, soft skills or key elements uh, <clears throat> that we develop in uh, in this uh, in this moment of, a, of of emergency? That for a business like ours, it was really a big big emergency yeah? because from uh, one day to to another, we had completely to redesign everything, and we have to redesign everything not in two or three restaurants. We had to redesign everything in 2,400 uh, restaurants. Really, in two, three weeks, we had to do uh, this uh, uh, this uh, this exercise. Um, well, I mean, mm, for sure, we have developed. Uh, strong skills around uh, uh, flexibility and adaptability uh, which is the contrary of our uh, of our uh, way of running a business uh, till uh, six months uh, ago if you imagine I'm talking about big volumes quite rigid uh, people doing every day the same type of, uh, of job uh, clear process clear procedures and really set and in, in place and we need to be very adaptable, uh, very flexible, uh, very resilient because every day there was an emergency, uh, that's the reality and we discover a certain level of uh, adaptability that we didn't know to, uh, to have. And then I, I think it's important the, the, the point around the analytical skills. Um, it was really a period uh, where we had to test, learn, read numbers, uh, make decisions uh, quite in, analytica, in an analytical way, short term, uh, redesigning, reading the numbers, uh, uh, reading the events uh, based on uh, numbers, not gut feeling, changing. Uh, dealing with numbers, um, I think was a kind of um, upscale uh, the organization in in uh, in general, which is not easy because uh, if you start from the number and then you need to put in, in a broader perspective, uh, it means also to be able to approach everything in a more systematic way not uh, only in a small pieces and operational issue that you need to solve, which is sometimes part of your daily, of our daily, daily job. And then uh, I think uh, creativity, I mean, I know that I'm, I'm telling you probably uh, the words that uh, the majority of the people uh, uh, who have been uh, through and are through uh, this crisis are telling you because creativity, innovation uh, can be the normal and usual words. Okay, that's fine. The reality is that uh, 
is really changing so much our environment and we keep on changing. That's the reality. There will be a new normality. Uh, we, we cannot probably now yet define properly, but for sure it won't come back as it was uh, before. Uh, it is uh, probably for everything in, uh, in uh, what we were doing and in what we do in the future, for sure it will be around, uh, around uh, our, uh, our business. And uh, definitely we apply a uh, new project. We were also able to define small project uh, in one restaurant uh, and then scale them up uh, quite, uh, quite quickly. Why? We, because we were able to work uh, in a more cooperative way. Uh, it, is, uh, it was crucial. Uh, I mean, I know that uh, I mean, we are in a kitchen uh, definitely and uh, there is always a team uh, working that's for sure because otherwise you cannot work in uh, in uh, in a kitchen and you cannot run a restaurant and you cannot run a service in a restaurant if you do not have uh, a kind of uh, team working approach okay that's the reality uh, but i think that in this moment that was also um an emotional uh, moment because uh, you had to cope uh, on one end uh, with your feeling of uh, of uh, fairness because that's the reality uh, personal one uh, and then uh, on the other uh, end uh, they had on all the people and they made a great job our employees uh, in the last uh, three three months i'm paying a tribute now with you uh, to them definitely because they were outstanding um, every day uh, that's the only way they were able to to be uh, helping uh, helping each other and then uh, i like to say the, the make it happen uh, things execution execution uh, execution so we were able to uh, redesign things and then we were able to make them happen quickly uh, effectively um, I would say also uh, profitably because this is something that we always uh, always do and we need to keep um, to keep in mind with the reactivity uh, really from one day to another to the other and uh, in in a, in a company so big uh, it's it is really fundamental design think execute test learn it works not you read you rethink and you re-execute immediately. Uh, then you have one best practice in one in one place and you need to scale it up. Uh, in general, it's true. In this moment of time, we were facing something unexpected. No one uh, no one knew how to cope uh, with it. Was really every day was uh, was a new was somehow a new a new day. Um, I think I finish. Uh, this uh, 40 minutes of uh, discussion with, uh, with, uh, with you, trying to give you really in a nutshell, and uh, it was uh, too dense and condensed to tell you what we do, who we are, uh, problems, issues, uh, what we think it will be the future, even if we are redesigning uh, it uh, now, and it will be a process in the next uh, two, three months. And, uh, how, uh, what type of skills on top of the professional, sorry, on top of the uh, uh, hard skills related to a specific uh, area of, uh, of job and, uh, and role, what type of soft skills uh, are, they were fundamental in, uh, in, uh, in the prizes and they will be fundamental uh, for, the next, uh, for the next 12 months uh, where probably we see even more changing uh, than we had expected. Do you think, hello, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I try to, there is one question that I tried to read. There was, I think, a question, chat, here we go. I need, I need some help from Matteo because I've seen a question of on uh, Andrea. 
chat. Allora, sulla chat dove chat tutti. Si chiama chat tutti. Prima ok. Dove... Chat, here we go. Thank you for your speech. Thank you, Molly. Uh, do you think that some of these solutions are for pre-book and wedding could prevent uh, food waste? Do you already have some data on this? Okay. First answer, yes. I do believe it prevent, uh, can help uh, a lot uh, around food waste. It is uh, the initial reason why, Molly, we develop a digital solution. Because uh, waste, I mean, if you divide waste in two macro... Uh, Words. The first one is waste in production, which is a small, I would say, uh, percentage of the total food waste. And by the way, we are working around training our people to be more effective in producing so that we have the minimum level of waste. And even if we have now, we are trying a solution to uh, recycle also this type of waste. The second one is waste, food waste on the tray so basically uh i arrive in a canteen i see what is uh, what is in and i need to make a kind of uh, trade-off while if you order what you want previously then of course you consume what you have to so for sure it will prevent food uh, food waste it will also help us to design better menus, uh, better recipes, and redesigning the menu, I think it helps to meet and match better consumer expectation and what I offer. So for sure, we see it as a solution. And do you already have uh, some data on, uh, on, uh, on uh, this? Uh, we are running uh, two pilot on uh, food waste uh, in, uh, in uh, in our uh, in our restaurant in BNI restaurant unfortunately we had to stop uh, during this uh, emergency window but once uh, things will be normalized for sure we will uh, we will keep on uh, doing this pilot and we have some data on this uh, we need to arrange a reach and reach and reach them I don't know whether there are other questions or in case uh, you want to ask even. Thank you. We're talking about the need of redesign things. And at the same time, they need to come back to new normality. According to you, what is the space for action inspired to circular economic principle? Will the new concept be more favorable or not? Um, um, Nadia, I think, uh, as I said before, uh, sustainability and for me circular economy is of course uh, part of a broader sustainability concept will be one of the key driver of the new normality so it's the question is it will help this new contest it will be more favorable or not i would say yes definitely it will be more favorable what i think is probably in the short term people are still uh, uh, frightened by this emergency situation and probably they are slightly their, uh, uh, I would say they um, they were key in terms of uh, in terms of need okay now they have an urgent uh, need which is around uh, safety and plastic which is not but in the future yes for sure I will probably also see um, a, an higher trend in terms of localism uh, for sure. Uh, in terms of supply chain uh, around food, uh, there will be some changes for sure. Once uh, it, everything will be, let's say, reorganized uh, after the emergency, I would say. Ciao Andrea, come stai? Eh, ciao, bene. Ciao Riccardo. Ciao. Uh... I thought a lot about you and the companies in the last month because uh, I was imagining the, the huge effort that you had uh, to, to face in the last, um, the last period due to the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, I have just a few questions. Uh, first, 
Mm, how increase the use of the app Joy Food in terms of takeaway and um, delivery uh, booking respect of a few months ago? So it, it increased a lot the the users from the from yes, the users a lot. from your clients. Yes. yes, a lot, a lot, Ricardo. It's really numbers that we uh, we had never seen. I would say. Okay. So really, um, I would say it, it it will be a game changer. Uh, that's for sure. We so we with, with all the positive related, eh? so numbers, data. Uh, then it will of be. Of course, of course. So, well, you remember, oh, we were talking about yes, the yes, app yes. a few yeah, months ago, so it's it's an it incredible be, uh, opportunity. It is. It is. It is. We will have to reorganize probably ourselves in terms of uh, data scientists uh, and all the um, BIs that we need to have in the back office to manage properly this type of uh, data. But it will be a big source of uh, of, of of information. And uh, then uh, this information of um, course, uh, there are opportunities and then you need to manage uh, properly. Okay, thank you. And you said also another thing, um, you are thinking about to deliver uh, food at home uh, due to the new concept uh, of smart working and so on. So you do think uh, that you will increase the cooking center uh, instead of proper canteen in um, in industry and in so in other uh, in other sectors. Um, Luca, I, I I think Ricardo, um, there will be on the white uh, white collar uh, type of uh, of uh, of business and industry. So basically, we divide the industry in the blue collar and the business yes. in, uh, in the white collar. I don't know whether it's right or wrong, but that's 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 the rule uh, that the contract catering mm -hmm. uh, industry has. On, on the business one, I think we will have more hybrid type of restaurant, uh, more flexible because numbers will be in general and on average slightly, slightly lower. And on the contrary, we will have to increase, but that's already because we have uh, in Bologna, we have a central kitchen that is dealing with modified uh, uh, atmosphere uh, technology, uh, can guarantee uh, eight or nine uh, days of shelf life uh, and uh, I would say more than a level of quality in terms of food and a fantastic range in terms of uh, in terms of recipes uh, so uh, for sure uh, I see a trend uh, around uh, uh, center of excellence in terms of uh, food uh, of food production uh, yes I see, I see it in the future in the, in the industry. Mm -hmm. And one last question, this is more a uh, curiosity and maybe you have some idea. Um, you, as you say before, there is this huge uh, problem right now with, uh, with plastic, uh, with uh, sure. one usage uh, tools, uh, utensils uh, and cups and so on. Um, how do you think it's possible to cope with this situation in the next future? Do you have some ideas? Um, well, I, I first of all, I think it will be really a short, uh, uh, a short, I would say, situation. Okay. Now I see uh, people uh, uh, because of the prices that they are they are back into plastic. Also because we were not, uh, let's say, ready. That's the reality. Uh, yes. We were ready to cope with this emergency, and so we said, "Okay, let's park uh, for a moment uh, the uh, more important uh, sustainable uh, uh, discussion around uh, plastic. Uh, let's focus on, let's say, health and safety." Okay, that's that's one point. But now I'm talking for Elior. We are already reorganizing uh, ourselves uh, because we see emerging request about. Uh, keeping, uh, let's say, the monodose type of uh, health and safety, okay, but switching out from the plastic, which basically means uh, that you apply the same behavior of having a monodose, a mono use, but in a less uh, environmentally impactful way. So, um, I, I, I see 
in the next four five uh, months uh, back uh, on the table uh, the issue around uh, around uh, plastic and the need uh, and the willingness uh, to uh, rid off of it um, is true is true that also from uh, a supplier standpoint uh, uh, the industry around uh, all the monodos uh, <laughs> The issues in place and everything uh, probably it was not uh, as ready as we would have liked to be honest and also in terms of uh, being able uh, to cope uh, with this uh, capacity need eh? so um, it will take a bit of uh, a bit of time i would say ricardo but uh, definitely it is in the agenda no one in the contract catering at least but i think in general uh, has in mind the idea that this uh, crisis uh, uh, change the uh, sustainability agenda of the country and of the continent and I would say of the world. I think no one. It will be even more important, I tell you. That's my personal uh, view. That's a kind of an aesthetic type of, uh, of moment. Uh, but it will be even, even more important. My, 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 my personal uh, view, but also my company view. Thank you very much. <laughs> Prego. Uh, good evening, Andrea. Good evening. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Um, I just wanted your opinion on if, if there will be an increase in the number of people um, using restaurant services because they've been deprived of these services during the lockdown. And hmm. If there is, for example, if there is an increase in prices because of an increase in costs, like you mentioned, don't you think uh, it will discourage people from eating out? And uh, like you mentioned, the way of uh, generating new revenue stream, like through e-commerce platforms, like is it not enough to mitigate the increase in costs? Hmm. Okay, uh, it's quite quite a complex uh, question, and not not okay. I try to give you my my view. Uh, first, uh, I think there will be in the uh, short term uh, increase of price. Yes, simply because uh, uh, now we are in a situation where uh, process spaces and cost uh, they are still designed from the pre-COVID uh, for the pre-COVID situation. And now you don't have the revenues for the post-COVID. Uh, uh, sorry, and now you have, you, have, you have the revenue related to the post-COVID, still cost there. So the only way that they have, uh, because there will be higher cost, that's the reality. It will be higher cost. PP, uh, it's a cost. Uh, increased usage of sanification is a cost. Uh, having uh, a lobby with half of the occupancy is a cost because you pay the rent for the entire uh, entire hobby. So there will be an increase of cost, and for sure there will be an increase of, uh, of, of price, and it's something that has been already, already um, uh, happening. What I think uh, I can imagine, it's a kind of polarization. Uh, so there will be a restaurant, uh, a lot focus on uh, delivery and e-commerce, already designing uh, uh, their service uh, in... Uh, smaller place okay with few seats and the majority of the business coming uh, from uh, from delivery and then there will be restaurant with a new experience that will be high quality experience quite high priced uh, with also a certain level of service that's how i see uh, some uh, some uh, some signals on uh, how much e-commerce is able, and I think your question, to compensate, uh, let's say, the missing, uh, the missing revenue, it can uh, uh, compensate, but it won't compensate the totality. Because at the end, going to the restaurant, uh, it was around uh, eating, but it was also around a kind of social experience. It was the combination of both elements. Now, when you have the delivery, which is linked to the e-commerce, uh, the social experience, yes, it is, uh, 
but it's the social experience basically in your house, in your home. So it depends, you need to invite friends, not always. So there will still be a part that is not uh, uh, coming back. So I, I, I think it won't cover the entire uh, uh, business uh, that has been, uh, has been lost. That's my personal uh, view and also um, I see also some numbers in our uh, in our experience where we had uh, uh, all the new initiative around uh, uh, click and collect, um, delivery at desk and everything, uh, plus the people in the restaurant, uh, we were not able to compensate uh, the entire loss in the short term, at least. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I think they are pushing you, huh? Okay. Thank you very much, Andrea. Uh, thank you. Thank you.